Welcome to Solar Sunday episode two, where we explore topics related to the transition to net zero. Last year, I installed over 13 kilowatts of rooftop solar and two Tesla Powerwalls. This week, our energy supplier has announced some dramatic price increases to our energy tariff. Will we save money? Keep watching to find out. Our current electricity tariff is a time of use tariff that gives us two prices for electricity every 24 hours. We have a peak price from 7 a.m. to midnight, and from midnight to 7 a.m. we pay less off peak. Now, in 2022, when we commissioned the solar system, we were paying 16.9 pence per unit peak, 9.2 pence per unit off peak. In order to make a fair comparison, I'm going to look at the year 2021. January to December. In this year, we had two electric vehicles, but no solar, no power wall. Everything else, pretty much the same. And in 2021, we used 14,413 units of peak electricity and 6,757 units of off-peak electricity. Now I'm gonna use these figures for comparison. This works out to be a total of 2,790 pounds and 49 pence for the year. That includes all of our house use, business use, as well as the motoring expenses pretty much for the two electric vehicles. In 2022, the price increased to 22 pence per unit peak and 12 pence per unit off peak. Now this comparatively brings the price in total to 3,634 pounds. It's an increase of about 30, well it is exactly 30%. This year from July, we're going up to 34 pence per unit peak and 24 pence per unit off peak. This is a total of 5,940 pounds and 40 pence, which is an increase for us of about 113.4%. So had we done nothing and didn't order the solar or batteries, we could expect to be paying an extra 262 pound 50 a month or just over three grand per year on top of what we budgeted just over a year ago. But we did invest in a system to install solar and Powerwall, even though we haven't actually had it for a full year yet. The solar panels went live in July 2022, and the batteries went live a month later in August. We were physically actually disconnected from the grid due to local grid issues for most of the rest of the summer, running entirely from solar and batteries for the house, work, and two electric vehicles. But for comparison again, on a typical day, we consume 36.37 kilowatt hour during the daytime at the higher peak rate. If we can shift this load to the batteries and generate the remainder of the balance when the sun shines, we can dramatically reduce the total amount that we spend on electricity. If we can ensure that we don't import energy from the grid during the expensive times, it's possible to save quite a bit. If we didn't have solar and kept our usage patterns the same, which includes some EV charging and appliance use during the day at peak rate, we would need three, actually 2.69 Powerwalls at 13.5 kilowatt hour each. My stats have been based upon using 14,413 units of peak electricity and nearly 7,000 units of off-peak electricity. It's fairly obvious that if you have a time of use tariff like this one, you could benefit from moving your energy use from peak to off-peak as much as you possibly can, just with simple behavior changes. This is a really poor 46.8% efficiency ratio, or pathetic off-peak over-peak energy ratio, or pooper. Now, if you don't want to be a power pooper, you want that ratio to be as close to 100% as possible, and really push that peak energy poo down as close to zero units as you can. So, as an example, in the worst bill of the year, from just last December, the 13th of December, to the 5th of March, on the wintry and dark and cold Isle of Man, we imported 4,331 units of off-peak versus just 863 units of peak energy. We generated 772 kilowatt hour of solar, which worked out to be about 17% of our peak daily usage. The winter is really where the power walls came into their own, allowing us to behave almost normally and with the power just being shifted from off-peak to peak just for us. Now with Powerwall assistance, we achieved a pooper score of 80%. And that's in the winter, our worst pooper billing quarter. In last week's video, I said this, is that with a time of use or dual tariff, you can effectively download energy at a cheaper off-peak rate, which is typically in the middle of the night or for very short periods during the day, for use when energy prices are higher. 
The savings from this alone may make battery storage, even without solar panels, a financially sensible decision. Now, if you can't get solar, a home battery could make financial sense on its own by providing you with a convenient way to extend your off-peak pricing into the expensive peak time of the day dramatically increasing your pooper score. For batteries to be really effective, you need the price differential between peak and off-peak to be wide. Unfortunately, the off-peak differential was about 55% of the peak price, and now it's just 30% of the peak price. This makes batteries slightly less beneficial, but the increase to peak solar makes solar more beneficial, more useful. So onto solar then, our solar system, which at the time of writing has generated 5.65 megawatt hours, is on course to generate around 10 to 12 megawatt hours in its first year. In 2021, this was going to be around 2,000 pounds worth of energy. It's now going to be generating energy worth around 3,500 to 4,000 pounds. But I have to tell you, ordering solar and having it installed is not an overnight process, and our system has been evolving over this time. So at first we had some solar panels installed and then we had power walls and we were disconnected from the grid. Then we were reconnected to the grid, but we were unable to export to it. Then we had some trees taken down, unfortunately due to an ash dieback disease, but also they affected the solar panel shading. So it's a bit bittersweet. We can also now, as of this week, export energy to the grid. And of course, export, we'll come to this later, but you get paid a little bit of money for each unit you export. It also means that your kit can actually work better. You need some export for your solar system to work and just live its best life. We still have some trees that need their canopies adjusting, which will let more light through again. At the time of recording, we've saved over 2.2 tons of CO2, and planted the equivalent of 66 trees. This is going off the US EPA and local standards. It is absolutely clear that home generation has the potential to mitigate the impact of the rising electricity costs. We're on course to generate more energy than we consume over the summer, stay tuned of course to find out, meaning we'll be meeting all our needs and won't be paying all of these sky high prices. As we pay a regular monthly standing order to the electricity company, this will kind of build credit with them. And this, along with the solar fit payments, the feed-in tariff payments, which we receive for each unit of energy we export, you know, excess, um, I hope this will offset what will be our biggest winter bills to date at the end of the year. If you're interested in getting a solar system for yourself and would like to see the five biggest traps and mistakes that people make when installing solar and batteries, click on Sabre for last week's episode. If this video has been helpful to you, please like the video to tell YouTube that it's been useful. Maybe share it with your friends or into a Facebook group for renewable energy and definitely subscribe for next week's Solar Sunday episode. And I will see you again next week. Bye for now.